Now we begin with a disturbing story out of New York City where police officers were beaten by a violent mob that police say was made up of migrants. This horrifying video shows the moment that the attackers pounded two NYPD officers. Police say those officers were trying to break up a disorderly crowd outside a shelter in Times Square. But when they tried to arrest one of the individuals, the mob attacked, pushing and punching the officers. You can even see one suspect here kicking an officer in the face while he is on the ground. One officer suffered a cut to his face while the other sustained body bruises. Five of those violent suspects were arrested by police later that same night. They faced charges for assaulting a police officer and more. With police sources telling Fox that one of the men arrested has two open assault and robbery charges. But to add insult to injury, according to court records, at least four have been released without bail. The NYPD chief of patrol spoke out this morning. You saw the video, reprehensible, cowards. You have eight people attacking a lieutenant and a cop, running up to them, trying to kick him in the face and kick him in the face. The four that were arrested should be sitting in Rikers right now, on bail, should be indicted this week and taken off our streets. You wanna know why our cops are getting assaulted? There's no consequences, and we must change this. End of story. Jimmy Fela, you hey, come hey. from a strong family history with, with a lot of police officers in your family. Yep. And earlier, the Police Benevolent Association, Patrick, said uh, President Patrick Henry condemned the attacks. Yep. And the criminal justice system, he said there is an epidemic right now mm -hmm. of assaults on police officers. And the reason, he said, are open door, revolving door cases like this one. A hundred percent. We've broken the compass in society in that we have a criminal justice system now that has more empathy for the criminal than the victim. Certainly more of empathy for the criminal than the cop, and I think that's emblematic of the aftermath of the summer of 2020. But there's a reality that at the tippy top of all of these state governments, and certainly the federal government as a whole, there's a basic indifference to this quality of life decline that we're witnessing everywhere. I travel a lot as a comic. I go to every town you can think of because I don't have the best agent, okay? <laughs> but the point is, no, I kid. I've seen it. Everywhere I go, you pull off the exit ramp, and you're like, wow, this town seems to have let itself go. But it's not the town people that feel that way. It's the fact that they can't get the laws enforced. And when it comes to the border, that border crisis, as we know, is now a dereliction of duty that affects every state in the country. So I'm not surprised by this, but I'm frankly disgusted that we've had this many of these, and it still hasn't been addressed and stopped. And Harris, you know, what Jimmy's talking about is real, but I argue that that, that numbness, you know, the apathy, that's not on the part of, of the citizens. That's 100% in those in those positions of decision-making because they're the ones that for some reason aren't seeing it. This guy I mentioned that, that has the, the um, pre-existing cases, he was arrested for punching, biting, and kicking a retail employee. He tried to steal from them. He punched a loss prevention officer. So... I am shocked by this because I didn't realize we'd migrated so far as a society that we would give criminals who potentially have come across the border illegally the same rights that our people have, which have been mitigated so much by soft on crime policies. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's gotten so, e so much easier for the criminals and so much harder for the victims. And now the people who break our number one law first coming across the border, number one thing, like you didn't even get here legally, yeah. and then they get to do more crime against us. And then you let them go per the things that are on the books for the criminals who are American, zero bail. So I'm, I'm, I am actually surprised and shocked that we have gotten that far. But I don't want to be surprised or shocked about what has to happen next. Yep. I want to feel confident that we're going to do the right thing. And that is, if we think these guys came over illegally, deport them now. Yeah. Do not spend another dime of taxpayer money trying to figure out what they did and what they didn't do. They were already criminals. If they, if they did do this, send them back. Yep. If they didn't do this, send them back. No more taxpayer money trying to harbor and normalize crime mm -hmm. by criminals who don't respect this country enough to try to get in line and come here legally. Full stop. And, and just one thing to add, and I'm sorry, okay, what frustrates me is this is not a political issue, okay? Crime affects all of us. When you get mugged, they don't ask who you voted for. 
And this is a moment where you realize the point you just made is not a conservative point, it's an American point. It, America's it, better than it's this. It's a true point. Yes. We have Spot sovereignty on. as a nation. Spot I don't on. care how you vote. Thank you. I don't care what you think. What I know is this is the United States of America. And if they broke laws to get here, don't spend another dime on them. Deport them. <laughs> Well, and it seems, Kaylee, that in that equation, that faulty equation, it's the police officers, it's the kids that are getting the worst end of the deal. We've talked about this at length. Kids are getting shoved off their soccer fields, and now we are watching NYPD get assaulted, and that's supposed to be okay. We know last year's numbers here alone reached 100,000 illegal immigrants. We know that we are projected to spend $12 billion as a city in the next three years, mm -hmm. and we watch our cops getting beaten down while they are continued subjected to horrible regulations and laws and policies that are demoralizing and underfunding. Yeah, When's so they, enough enough? So it, enough is enough. So these men who are purportedly, we believe here illegally, that's at least the fact pattern we have currently, the charge is assault of a police officer, gang assault, obstructing governmental administration, disorderly conduct. You mentioned the individual who already has a separate assault charge. And in that incident, he allegedly pushed, punched, and bit someone, yeah, bite, biting was, occurred, and punched a loss prevention officer, which yeah. is what you mentioned. But what I'm interested in, you know, that's all state law here in New York. We'll see if they get convicted. They will have their day in court. But we have federal law, the Immigration and Nationality Act, which says, and I'm going to quote it directly, the Attorney General, his name's Merrick Garland, by the way, currently, the Attorney General shall take into custody certain migrants. Here they are. Among the classes of migrants, he shall take into custody someone who's inadmissible on specified criminal grounds. They're deportable by reason of having exactly. committed a specified yeah. criminal yeah. offense. Among the specified yeah. criminal offenses, aggra aggravated assault. So I would love to see the interaction of state law here, should there be a conviction, federal law, and we have to wait to see if there's a conviction. But if there is, will the attorney general take action? Mm -hmm. Is this a specified criminal ground? It should be if it is not already. And to your point, the kids, remember the brilliant idea of we're going to put these guys in school gyms yep. next to kids in school? It's crazy. These guys attacking a police officer potentially by New York City school children. Brilliant idea. Mm. And the age of these men, too, these young men, 19 years old, 20, 21. Yeah. We also have reported on a host that have come through with zero ID. Remember, photos are elective at the airport who are claiming to be minors, so they get the protection as well of this amnesty light that this administration likes to subject Americans to, which only render us more dangerous and these kind of crimes that we watch on live TV. That's right, Emily. And you know, as an immigrant myself that spent 10 years becoming a citizen, I see this and the easiness of just walking across, skipping the line. We talk about follow the process. Right now there is over 1.4 million work visas that are backlogged. Those are mm -hmm. folks with PhDs, with MBAs, graduates from American universities that are getting deprioritized because of the crisis. But here's one thing that nobody's talking about. This video we keep playing over and over again is the best advertisement today, tomorrow, this coming months, for the smuggling networks that are making more than $13 billion right. a year with the business of crossing over people freely. Mm -hmm. And that is no longer just freelancer coyotes here and there. It's a network tied to the cartels that puts our national security at risk. And it's just, we need to understand that allowing this is perpetuating the advertisement of come to America so easy and you go there and you don't get in trouble. Yeah, you get treated right. just like an American exactly. citizen who commits a crime. Even That's a sex right. change surgery in California. That's right. Although I, I love your word. However, all of us have been deprioritized and that is Biden's America. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.